Welcome back lighting friends, it's Robert from Pathway Connectivity Solutions in the continuing series about the Cognito Lighting Control Console and the Neato app for your iOS device. Last time we talked about the fundamentals of the software and the four tasks that you repeat, select, control, record and play. And as promised, this session is about the pin. And the pin is the button that you will see right between fader 10 and 11. And what the pin does, it essentially doubles the number of faders that you have available to you. So to demonstrate it on the software, what I'm gonna do is show you that uh, as I moved up the first fader, you can see the first light actually gets moved up as well. And down below here, we have a little bit of a simulation. So, and this is just so I can be in different modes and show you things at the same time. So if you look, these are the first 10 lights here, and then I'm just gonna hit the bump buttons for 11 through 20 so you can identify where they are. So if I bring up these lights, you see them there, and I bring up these lights and you see them there. So that gives you a, a little idea of, of how I'm gonna demonstrate this. So in a single scene um, manual control desk, you bring up a light and then they say, we need another light. So you grab the handle and you say, stand by and go. And then you push it up and that's where it goes. But sometimes it's a lot more complicated than just bringing up one light. So if we needed to go to another scene, a two scene, which is the old two scene desks, what we do is we pin the output. And I do that just by hitting the green light and then uh, it turns to amber and it flashes. So if we look on the screen here now, we get little representations up above showing us what level is actually being sent to the stage. We've pinned that DMX and it's just being sent to the stage. So now we're free to do anything on the hardware. Look, I'm gonna pull these things down. But if you look in my simulation, nothing has changed on stage. Then I can go and set up a much more complicated scene. Look, here I am, I'm creating just the most wonderful piece of art over here. And stage management says, stand by Robert for the next cue and the next cue go. And when I wanna do that, I just hit this pin button and it will actually crossfade, as you can see, from one scene to another scene. Now, you can do this uh, on the hardware, of course, or you can also, look at it on the play sliders version of the Neato app. So here, if I was on the hardware, you can actually see that uh, it's actually gonna move the handles here and I can freely move the handles on the iOS app as well. And then when I'm happy, I can pin those and then I can scroll over to a different area and I could bring up more faders. Look, I'm using different hand, uh, multiple fingers here. And maybe I'll go back here and I'll pull those out. Nothing's changing on the stage while I'm doing this. But then I hit the pin button and we see the crossfade from one scene to another. So that's using Neato in the pin. That's just in the direct select mode where, let me release everything out here. Uh, in the direct select mode where you're actually just controlling the intensities of the lights. Let's do something a little bit more interesting. Let's just grab these group of lights here and uh, I'm gonna push them up. Now I'm gonna select some, oh, first off, I'm gonna pin it, pin it to the stage. So there we go, we pin that. And now I'm going to select some of the lights in the middle and I'm going to hit the color button on my desk and I'm gonna take down the green and take down the blue by rolling down the green and the blue wheels. So the effect of that should be red on those lights. So let's see what happens when we do a pin. And what we do is those lights in the middle crossfade to red. So that's a combination of select and control using the pin. But sometimes you've actually gone ahead and recorded some memories and you've, you've placed them onto the memory page. If I go into the play task, we can actually see I've recorded, what's it called? Pink to blue. So that's a little graduation across maybe my cyclorama. I've recorded green and blue stripes. And I've also recorded here an amber look on a number of different lights. So first cue of the show, 
is a nice painting on the psych. Then we pin that. Pin. I'm free now to pull things out. Then I may want to bring up the stripes. Now if you look at this, since the pin light is flashing, you actually have green here. And as you move these handles, have a look right here, a virtual version of that handle is moving. But you see it's not actually affecting the bar chart in the middle. And that's because we're pinned, that's why it's green. So now I'm gonna unpin, I'll do it by clicking here. And you see the transition on stage, and they're yellow now, the little bar graphs are yellow, and that is telling us that uh, those are what the live values are going out to the stage. So if I grabbed another handle here, and I brought that in, that's gonna do that amber, it's gonna lay it on top, and it's hot, it's yellow, as we can see on the screen. I'm gonna pin that, and let's just pull out the stripies underneath, and then we can unpin it, and you see the effect on stage. So that's a very quick overview of the pin in Cognito and Neato and how you can use it when your event is maybe not so structured where you had time to build queues and all the rest of it. I hope you join me next time. We're going to talk about the patch and how you can add moving lights and RGBs and assign them across your DMX universes. Until next time, thank you very much for joining me. I'm Robert from Pathway Connectivity Solutions.